This is the Reasoner Report, the second week in March. Here is correspondent Harry Reasoner. Good evening. Once upon a time, Haiti was the richest colony in the Western Hemisphere. Today, Haiti is the poorest country of all the Americas. This week, we'll look at the two faces of Haiti. There is the public face. There is the government that is heavy-handed and all-powerful and that takes care of its own and takes good care of the Yankee tourist dollars and those who spent them. The only ones not taken care of are the people. They are the other face of Haiti. The Haitian government never cares for the people. For years, American tourists headed for the vacation islands of the Caribbean were warned to avoid Haiti. The reason? The brutal government that ran the country was given to random acts of terror that sometimes even impinged on the life of the visitor. Then, three years ago, the dictator of Haiti, Francois de Valier, died and deeded the rule of his republic to his teenage son. Since then, Haiti has sought to shine up its image. Baby Doc, the sun was far different from cruel old Papa Doc, we've been told. Haiti has changed. Come on down. Well, we decided to send Herb Kaplow on down, along with this winter's crop of tourists, to find out if things really were different and better. He found that it may now be an okay place to visit, but if you were a Haitian, you wouldn't want to live there. <laughs> Tourists, particularly Americans, are visiting Haiti in increasing numbers. What they find here is a strikingly beautiful country with virtually no outward signs of the strong arm repression that once scared them away. This was a rare outward sign. January 2nd of this year, a national holiday. Day of glorification of national heroes. By tradition, the president drives through the streets throwing dimes to his subjects. This time, after returning to his palace, the president sent more money out to be distributed by his soldiers, but they kept it. When the crowd protested, the soldiers moved in. They say it was worse under the previous president. They say Francois Duvalier, by training a doctor, killed 20,000 people, some of them personally with a pearl-handled revolver. He died in April 1971, leaving to his 19-year-old son, his presidency, the widespread belief in his voodoo powers, and his revolver. Jean-Claude Duvalier, now 23, like his father, president for life, is the world's youngest chief of state. Without repudiating Papa Doc's policies, Baby Doc promised reforms. One of those reforms, a claim that he dissolved the dreaded Tonton Makut, the murderous roving bands whose only loyalty was to the president. <laughs> But the Tonton Makut still exists, less openly, but perhaps as pervasively. Tontons are in the army. Most of the cab drivers are members. This man, one of our drivers, was a Tonton. Our other driver, frightened of prison, refused to take our camera crew to several locations. Some of the Tonton victims, some of their luckier victims, escaped. 
some escaped to Miami. Their ordeals, suffered since Baby Doc supposedly disbanded the Tontons, are embedded in their memories. A relative accused of political activity, tortured and killed by the Tonton Makut. I went to the party after one party. Arrested for an argument with a Tonton at a party. Escaped. This man didn't have the $10 to buy a gun to join the Tonton when they tried to recruit him. So they tried to arrest him, but he escaped. This man complained when a Tonton refused to pay a car repair bill. He, his mother and grandfather were arrested and beaten. His mother died. He escaped. Jacques Montpremier, director of the Haitian Refugee Center in Miami, says it seems only the working hours have changed. The Tonton don't kill in the daytime any longer. When Duval was in power, they don't care to kill people during the daytime. Whenever they want to kill someone, they still kill it. But now they don't do the same thing, killing people in the daytime at any time. But it has been reported to us here that Many people get killed in the night. The people must understand that we have a kingdom in Haiti. Even though they don't call it kingdom, it is a kingdom. And for Jean-Claude to keep the power, he has to keep killing, killing, killing. He is a, a democratic government, uh, as it is defined in our constitution. Donison Alphonse is Haiti's Director General of Economic Planning. When I say democratic, you know that every, I would say, democracy is not an absolute value. So democracy is to be adapted to the local, geographical, and I would say geopolitical conditions. So our democracy is very genuine, is the Haitian democracy. Why do you have a president for life? According to our democracy, we realize that only a president for life can give us uh, this stability required for the economic development and peace. Once the rich farmland of Haiti made it France's most profitable colony. Now it can't feed itself. The most prolific land is owned by big companies and a few individuals. Most of its products, coffee, sugar, are exported. Sugarcane is a staple of the Haitian diet, but its nutritional value is low. Haitians are among the three or four worst-fed people in the world. Few Haitians own cars and the government runs neither buses nor trains, so this is what public transportation's like. It's like filling up about anything that moves. The vehicles are privately owned. The average fare is 15 cents, which is too much for most Haitians, so they walk and they carry. In this society, an inexpensive beast of burden, the human beast. It's different, of course, for President for Life, Jean-Claude Duvalier. His means of transportation includes a collection of expensive sports cars and motorcycles. This on a salary of $25,000 a year. And in a country where the main highway is paved for only 20 miles. And it took 10 years to pave that much. Work on this new highway and on just about all government projects proceeds very slowly because of corruption. A U.S. Senate report estimated that $10 million in Haitian government funds is unaccounted for each year. That's about 20% of Haiti's budget. We are not aware of any kind of those uh, disappearance of funds you just mentioned. 